Welcome to Feedback, an on-the-go podcast shining a light on the latest products from the world's top electronic suppliers. Brought to you by Avnet and SupplyFrame. On the Feedback podcast, we ask our guests a series of questions to learn more about the products they specialize in. Today, we are joined by Bill Wilson, a new product development manager at Molex. In his current role, Bill's focus is on the development of new high-speed internal cable assemblies for the server storage market and creating a roadmap to meet the needs of key customers in the industry. Welcome to the Feedback Podcast, Bill. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks a lot for having me. Could you tell us how you came to be in your role at Molex? I've been with the company for 12 years, uh, various roles. About half that time I was in sales. Uh, the other half now I've been in uh, a couple different product development roles, currently focused on next generation developments for our high speed internal cable assemblies, whether that's uh, near ASIC uh, type of developments or uh, high speed next gen PCIe. Uh, for the server storage market, that's kind of where uh, I'm focused is, is developing a roadmap and kind of new product plans for um, you know meeting those various uh, needs in the industry with our, our key customers. What aspects of Molex's business and culture help it stand out from others in the electronics industry? Yeah, I think our continual focus on on kind of what's next and innovation and trying to anticipate the market needs, anticipate our customers' requirements. Um, is a big factor in that. So trying to do you know proactive development kind of behind the scenes on new products, new technologies, so that when uh, customers come to us and say, hey, we need this, we've you know hopefully already kind of anticipated that and have been planning for that in our product development cycles. And then kind of taking what we've learned and we've you know we have a long, long history in the industry. So uh, you know taking what we've learned over the last you know uh, one, five, 10, 20 years of product um, development design, and uh, kind of incorporating those lessons learned into our next generation products to, you know, making sure that our customers are satisfied with, um, you know, quality, performance, delivery, um, the commercial side of things like pricing and, and all of that. Um, I, I think we have a very um, well-rounded team to support not only the next generation stuff, but the existing products that are, are currently tooled and are shipping to, to customers today. How has the technology you work with changed over the course of your time at Molex? Been talking to our customers, they're kind of blown away by the you know the quickly advancing um, technology uh, in in this data center type space, right? Everything wants faster, denser, uh, lower power, um, all these type of things, which all kind of work against each other. But that's our challenge, right? Is trying to to come up with something that that kind of def- almost defies physics in terms of what you're able to do from a signal integrity standpoint, from a a data throughput standpoint um, and, you know, like a, a density standpoint. So, um, you know, that, that's really where the market's driving and, and we're seeing continued um, kind of generation uh, jumps uh, and probably more quickly than we've ever seen uh, before, right? These new chips, the new processors, the new devices, the new hard drives, the new, um, you know, everything really from the, the panel to the chip all the way through the system is just uh, you know accelerating at a, at a faster pace than we've seen because of the amount of data and the amount of uh, information and the amount of um, you know just uh, you know overall demand from you know whether it's consumer or government or education or research it's just everything's based around data now and so you need more of it and you need to process more of it and you need to get more of it uh, from point A to point B we've seen stuff go from you know, 25 gig to 56 gig to 112 gig, and now we're you know already talking 224 gig, and that's just in the last you know, like full you know, five years. So, um, and then you know when I started Molex, you know, 12 12 years ago, we were still putting out paper catalogs, right? And that kind of just goes to show you how, you know, just from my time there, how things uh, how things changed. Because uh, I mean, the paper catalogs became obsolete because information, you know, we were, products were coming out too quickly, stuff was changing, the requirements from our customers were too dynamic that, you know, by the time you printed a catalog, you know, a certain percentage of it was already obsolete. How does customer feedback influence the development of new designs and products from Molex? Having the ability to kind of talk to the customers um, and get their feedback, and usually at the customer, it's the, you know, the architects, the next generation, you know, system design type guys who are trying to see you know, where they can improve on their previous product. Um, it's, you know, signal integrity um, engineers and mechanical engineers uh, at our customers. And then you have, you know, you're, you're working with people like commodity 
and uh, component engineering too. So um, really just getting feedback from all of them on you know the various requirements and expectations uh, for next generation developments and then communicating those thoroughly and, and well back to our team. But I work with you know project management, I work with uh, sourcing, I work with the manufacturing engineers, the mechanical engineers, the electrical engineers, um, and so there's, you know, a wide, anytime we're on one of these project meetings, there's a wide range of, of different, um, you know, people from, you know, various uh, professions or groups within Molex that, that all come together to make these things happen. And, and really it's based on, uh, you know, I guess the success I would say from the very start is based on how well we understand our customers requirements. So that's kind of where, you know, being able to kind of bridge that sales slash, you know, personality type of expectation of being able to meet with people, get information, and then communicate that information back uh, has been really helpful for me in my career. What is the current roadmap towards reaching next generation levels of performance? And how do you define the lifespan of current generation devices? Up until a few years ago, Gen 3 and 8 gig was your main was your main PCIe uh, you know, uh, data rate. So then Gen 4 you know, has been around for, I would say has been mainstream for maybe the last three or four years. And then now the first Intel chips with Gen 5 are going to be released, you know, later this year, early next year. And we're already starting to anticipate what Gen 6 is going to look like. And we then Gen 5 hasn't even launched yet. Um, now, I mean, our, our customers, you know, that that sounds all fine and good until you realize that you put a ton of investment into Gen 5 devices, Gen 5 connectivity, Gen 5, uh, you know, all the system building blocks that you need to make that happen. And you don't really get your return on your investment if Gen 6 shows up in you know another year or two, right? You're, you're barely just getting off the ground with all the investment you made to get Gen 5 up and running. So it's kind of a, you know, the, all the quick advancement of the next generations is is good to a degree, but at some point you have to kind of ask yourself, what's the ROI on, on that? And so I think we've maybe seen a little bit of that where, um, you know, the, the original, you know, discussion of how long Gen 5 was gonna last and, and how long till Gen 6, I think, uh, maybe about a year and a half ago, there was some concern that Gen 5 wasn't going to have a long enough life, lifespan to make it worthwhile. But from what we've heard recently, there's there's potentially a little bit more runway there uh, for, for Gen 5 to, to last a little bit longer. What types of new innovations can we expect from Molex in the near future? I mean, I think from a Molex perspective, the only thing I'd really say is that, you know, we're, we're doing, um, you know, a lot of stuff in terms of creating a, a cohesive roadmap across the board, right, of, of you know, various high speed products from you know external IO cables to uh, bypass type of, of high speed uh, ports to near ASIC and on the ASIC and high speed backplane. I mean it's all um, you know and it's all pretty compelling from a you know compatibility standpoint of everything kind of works together. Um, you know, RSI teams are all, uh, you know, kind of in tune across, you know, various geographies uh, and different develop product development teams in different parts of the world um, to kind of make sure that that our, our product roadmap and our story and, and the solutions that we have for our customers are, um, you know, are going to exceed expectations for, for next generation. So, um, you know, we're excited. I'm excited. Um, I, I enjoy, you know, being in the role that I'm in because I kind of get to, to work with customers on those um, you know, innovations that stuff that hasn't existed before, data rates that haven't we haven't hit before, densities that are are very challenging, and trying to figure out ways to to make that happen. So, um, you know, just from being you know inside Molex, I think we, there's a there's a bright future of stuff that we have available, and and kind of you know enabling that next generation of connected devices, data center, um, and you know data transfer to kind of you know make sure we're at the forefront of, of what's coming up on the in the pipeline. Thanks, Bill. It was great talking with you today. Companies like Avnet and Molex strike a careful balance between supporting current generation technologies while also moving the needle forward for the industry as a whole towards next generation performance that redefines what's possible. Visit avnet.com slash Molex PCIE to learn more today.